What's up, everybody? Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jay. If you've been watching my videos, thanks for coming back. Today's video is going to be about freight shipping. I know I've talked about freight shipping before, showing you guys how I packaged up a transmission and an engine, but I've realized that I haven't done a generic freight shipping video talking about how you can go online and do the quote and everything. I've had a couple people comment and ask who I use because they're asking other companies and it's very expensive. So I'm gonna take the opportunity today and tell you guys who I use, how to go about getting your quote online, and hopefully you guys can um, use this and get some of your bigger items shipped out to make a lot more money. The company I use is YRC Freight. When I was searching for freight companies online, I came across them. And when I did a couple quotes, it was actually a very good price. So I've stuck with them since then. And like I said before, I think you guys might be surprised at how good the prices are. And really the whole point of this is to show you guys it's not that bad and that you guys can sell some of your bigger items. The company is YRC Freight. The website is yrc.com. The first time I shipped something, I actually went to the terminal to sit down and talk with somebody just to make sure I had everything correct. And I tried to learn what I was doing because I had never done it before. And if you actually go there, they will give you a much higher quote than online. So doing it at your house online before you even go there is the way to do it, um, which I learned. I'm sharing that information with you guys now. So um, you wanna do everything at your house and then when you're done, all you have to do is go there. They will take it off your trailer or out of your truck and you'll be done with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys on my computer um, the website and exactly how to do it. So when you go on yrc.com, this is the homepage. Um, you can see up here, ship, track, manage, all that stuff. So if you click on the ship, you can do rate quote right there. If you scroll down, get a quote right here, you can click on this. And this brings up the dimensional freight quote. And the best part about this is that you don't necessarily need to have the part in front of you. You can do a generic size and weight to a zip code and you can see how much it's going to cost, which is very nice. If you scroll down, you are going to be the third party right here because you're gonna pay for it. And then next is where do you want to ship? So this is the important part right here. So because today's Saturday, um, this date's not good, so I'm gonna go to Monday. I'm gonna show you guys a couple different options and you can see how drastically the price can change. So what I do is there is a terminal that's 20 minutes from me, so it's very easy for me to drop something off at a terminal. I have my car trailer that I can put any large stuff on. So I'm gonna ship from drop off at terminal. You wanna put in the zip code right there. And that is the town, North Reading, Massachusetts. And I randomly came up with a Midwestern zip code just to give you guys an idea of how much the price is going to be. So I'm gonna do a commercial with forklift or dock. That is very important. I'm assuming that most of the time you're selling big items, it is going to go to a commercial place, but I'm gonna show you the difference when it's not going commercial. So for the absolute lowest price, um, we're gonna do commercial with forklift or dock. And like I said, I just grabbed this zip code. I looked up a body shop in Fort Wayne, Indiana and just got the zip code just so I could make this video. So it's going from Massachusetts to Indiana. It's getting dropped off at a terminal and it's going to a commercial building. So down here, what do you want to ship? Um, this is where you get to choose what it's on, car and drum, pallet skid. So it's on a pallet. I'm gonna put in very generic four by four by four foot cube and then one unit and then the size of an engine or you know something really heavy. I'm gonna do 700 pounds. And then all you have to do now is hit next and it will think about this for a second. And this is what it gives you for a price quote. So at the top, time critical, accelerated, and then standard is right down here. So as you can see right here, it is $109 to ship this. Um, 
and that is a four by four by four foot package that weighs 700 pounds and that is going from massachusetts to indiana if you say you want to do this one standard select quote and then on this you are going to just fill in everything else ship from this is the shipper so you'd put in yrc freight and then you would just fill in the rest of the stuff ship to obviously this is the um this is the company with the address that you're going to ship to i just picked a random person so i'm not going to fill this out and then bill to this is you so you will need to fill in all your information down here and just want to make sure that this is correct this is what you are shipping so you can see 700 pounds 48 by 48 by 48 inches 4 by 4 by 4 feet and then that's pretty much it so then you could you'd be able to hit next and then you'd be able to put in all of your payment information so when you're filling this out this price that it tells you is the price there's no added fees there's no nothing extra when you get to the terminal they don't look it over or nothing. The, what you pay is what you pay now. So whatever the quote says in the quote summary is the actual price it's gonna be. They don't try to put any other fees in there at all. So that's a pretty quick, easy way to find out what it's gonna to take to ship anything. And um, as you can see, it's not that big of a deal. So what I wanna show you guys is how different it can be. So that right there is the lowest option that it could be when it's shipped from the terminal, which means you have to drop it off at the terminal. When it's shipped from the terminal and it goes to a commercial building with a forklift or dock. Now, if you do residential or non-commercial ship from and you're still going to ship to a commercial building, you can see that down here liftgate pickup has been selected this means that they will send a smaller uh, box van out to you with the liftgate to pick it up because you are at a residential place so once again like if you're someone like me who is just doing this out of their house on the side you might not have a trailer or a way to get it to a terminal or the terminal might be too far away so if we click next it's still going to the same place we haven't changed the zip code or anything and you can see now the standard rate is $244. So that's a pretty good jump. But if you still are charging shipping to the buyer and they really want it, then you know they could have it for under $250. If you're shipping out a nice engine that's worth $5,000, maybe you'll pay the $250 because you're making such a good profit off of it. So you can see just by adding a residential place, then the price is quite a bit different. So we're going to go back once again. And we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to change the ship to to a residential. So once again, down here, liftgate pickup and liftgate delivery. Now see how much that price has jumped three hundred and seventy nine dollars, in which case this might be getting too expensive for someone to want to pay. But what I want to do is show you guys the different options there are and how much it can affect it. So now you can see exactly how much more this is. You're talking $270 extra than the first quote, which was the cheapest. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this back to ship from the terminal and I'm going to ship to commercial with forklift or dock. And I'm going to change this zip code to another one. This is Livermore, California. So I'm doing this to show you, obviously, I live in Massachusetts. That's East Coast. This is shipping it all the way across the country to California, which besides Alaska or Hawaii or maybe even Washington State, this is about as far away as you'd probably ship it. Now, I still haven't changed any of the dimensions. And you can see that now that is $255. So that is about another $140 different from shipping it to Indiana, which is in the Midwest, to all the way across the country. Once again, we'll go back 
and I will just do from terminal to residential delivery. That means that you're still dropping off the terminal. You know, that's jumped all the way up to $385. So this is something where shipping further obviously adds a lot more money. But once again, what's nice about this is that these quotes are exactly the prices that you're getting. Say you are shipping still to California commercial place, dropping it off, but yet maybe you've changed the pallet size and we're going to go down to 30 inches and 20 inches tall. And maybe this is just a door and it weighs you know, 100 pounds. And you can see that now shipping from Massachusetts to California is only $147, which that isn't that bad. Something like this, if you're selling a door on eBay and you want to put in $150 shipping, you would be all, all set with that. All right. So as you can see, um, I played around with the numbers a little bit and played around with shipping to different places. Um, and you can see the difference in the prices. The thing to remember when you're doing this is that the cheapest way to do it, the most inexpensive way to do it is to drop off at a terminal and then ship to a commercial property that has a forklift or a loading dock where they can easily unload it. That is the cheapest way. If you are shipping from a commercial building to another commercial building, that would probably be the next cheapest. But the good thing about this website is that you can go on here and you can get all these quotes and what they quote you is the actual price you're going to pay. There's not going to be anything extra added on. So what you can do is when you get a part like a door or a transmission, uh, maybe a rear end housing, you can get that on a pallet, size it up, and then you can go on here and you can see the different prices. What you should do on your eBay listings, what I have done is I write a big paragraph that says for the buyer to talk to me before buying it so we can get together about shipping. That way they don't buy it and think that they are just going to get, you know, free shipping or really low shipping. If they want to talk to me and are really interested, they will give me the zip code and then I can go on here and I can actually get a real quote for them. It's really easy to get the quote. Obviously you have to get zip codes first, but if you have a trailer or a way to get it to the terminal, then that is a really cheap way to do it. If you already work in a commercial building, um, I know at my body shop I work at, we have a forklift. So if I had a part there, I could easily get it loaded up onto a semi truck. Um, that would be the next cheapest. When you're dealing with residential, that is going to be the most expensive way to do it. Um, especially if it's getting shipped from residential to another residential address. So you just want to keep that in mind. The other important thing to remember is that you want to make it as small of a package as possible, but with still maintaining all the proper supports and bracing that you need. If you go back and look at my freight shipping videos on the engine and the transmission, um, you can see that I made it as small as possible but you wanna make sure that the pallet and everything is all braced up good, supported good. So you don't wanna make it too small and flimsy that you might damage the part in the process. The only other thing that I can't show you on here because I'm not actually doing a shipment right now is that what you'll get at the end is the bill of lading, which is the actual shipping label. Um, it prints out a regular piece of paper it has the addresses and everything, um, dimensions, all that on it. And what I did was I bought these sticky envelopes that you can, um, you can put your bill of lading into, seal it down, you peel off, peel off the back, and then you can just stick that right on top of the crate. Um, that way it's stuck on there and it's not going to go anywhere. You put that right on the top and they can see and scan everything right there very easily. So if you're thinking about doing a lot of freight shipping, I'd suggest buying a good pack of these. I think I bought a pack of 100, they're, they're not expensive. Um, that way you have a secure way to put that label on your package. So that would be the only other thing I'd suggest buying. 
um, just to have on hand if you're going to get into more of this. Um, coming up pretty soon, I have the two doors from that Mercedes parts car that I really want to get out of my way and sold. So I'm going to come up with a couple pallets to, to get a good idea of the dimensions. And then I'll be putting those on eBay pretty soon, sometime over the winter. So I might have some other um, freight shipping videos for you guys in the future, hopefully. But I wanted to do this video because even though I talked about and showed how I packaged up that engine, I didn't really go through the actual steps of who I use and how to go about it. I got a comment from somebody on my engine shipping video that asked what company I used because he called up UPS and they quoted him $600 to ship a Malibu door which is an astronomical price to ship a door. So after I got that comment, I kind of realized I didn't go through how to get a quote for um, freight shipping. So that's why I wanted to do this video. So hopefully you guys can go onto the website and if you have some things laying around, you can measure them up and kind of get an idea of what it's gonna to cost to ship everything. I don't have any affiliation with YRC, so they've been okay with me. Hopefully they're okay with you guys. Um, I'd hate to see you guys, you know, use them and have things go wrong, but that is who I use and um, they've been okay. So hopefully they're okay for you. Um, I guess I have no reason to think that they wouldn't. So hopefully this cleared up some things for you guys who are wondering how I go about getting my quotes. And hopefully this will push some of you guys to, you know, sell a couple more bigger items or when you're looking at parts cars, and you're looking up what sells and there's some big items, but you don't know how to ship it, you guys can go on here and um, see that it's not too much money. When I shipped that transmission, it cost me $109. When I shipped the engine for that Mercedes, that was only $125 to ship a whole big heavy engine. So depending on how you ship it and who you ship it to, it doesn't have to be that expensive. Like I said, you guys learn something and this makes it a little bit easier for you guys. So if you have any questions, just let me know, leave a comment, I will get back to you. I'm trying to really help everybody out, you know, learning from what I do. So thank you for watching. I will see you next time.